The Ghosts of Beltane. The final day of April has arrived. The period between 30th April and 1st of May is known in the Gaelic calendar as Beltane. Beltane is associated with important events in Irish mythology. It marked the beginning of summer when farmers drove cattle out to the summer pastures. Beltane participants performed rituals to protect cattle, people and crops and encourage growth. Special bonfires were kindled whose flames, smoke and ashes were deemed to have protective powers. The people and their cattle would walk around or between bonfires and sometimes leap over the fire or embers. Beltane Dew was thought to bring beauty and maintain youthfulness. A feast would accompany these gatherings and those involved would offer some food and drink to the e she. Doors, windows, byres and livestock would be decorated with yellow mayflowers. Many of these customs were part of the May Day or Midsummer festivals in parts of Great Britain and Europe. Dan Hill is a Hampshire major. On the eve of Beltane, he travelled to Edinburgh to participate in a particular investigation. My name's Dan Hill, I am from Aldershot, Hampshire and I have been a psychic medium since I was eight. I started off um, hearing voices, seeing um, apparitions um, and finding out information that no one could really have known. Uh, I was treated at a young age for um, epilepsy uh, for four years um, and it wasn't until um, Most Haunted came out that I actually realised what I had and everything kind of made, made sense. Uh, I, when, I was, when I was eight I went to my local swimming pool and it, um, I done my lessons there, I've been doing it for a few years there and uh, one, one day I was uh, swimming and I had a pause and I couldn't quite work out what was going on and it was like swimming into a brick wall and I saw a gentleman at the end of the swimming pool and he asked me to carry on, he was waving me, carry on, give me encouragement and I managed to compose myself, got myself back on um, on the right path and um, I then uh, got out and spoke to my dad and he asked me about what happened and I explained to him and I said to him that basically I saw a man and he said there was no man and I didn't think anything else of it. I then came out of the pool complex, um, got changed, and on the notice board of the swimming pool changing room, uh, there was a, uh, a notice of a funeral going to be taking place of um, a lifeguard that had died two weeks previous, um, and that is the, the person I saw was the exact match. And I said to my dad about it, and he shrugged it off, being not a believer. And it's ever since then that I've been interested um, in what I saw. I couldn't explain it. Um, and that's kind of like triggered what I can do now. Spirit vision, paranormal research are no strangers to Edinburgh's darker side. Accompanied by paranormal footprints from Cumnock and guests, including professional boxer Steve Drago Robinson. They would pursue a weekend of paranormal investigation. The first stop of the weekend is the legendary Nidri Street Vaults. The Edinburgh Vaults or South Bridge Vaults are a series of chambers formed in the 19 arches of the South Bridge in Edinburgh. It was part of the South Bridge Act of 1785, completed in 1788. 
For around 30 years, the vaults were used to house taverns, workshops for cobblers and other merchants, and storage space for said merchants. In later years, the vaults were a hotspot for the homeless and criminal activity such as illegal gambling taverns, illegal whiskey distillery and, according to rumour, body snatchers. However, there is no proof that the grave robbers Burke and Hare ever used the vaults. As the conditions in the vaults deteriorated, Mainly because of damp and poor air quality, the businesses left in the 1820s and the very poorest of Edinburgh's citizens moved in. However, by around 1860, even they are believed to have gone. Evidence that people had lived there was only discovered in 1985 during an excavation when middens were found containing toys, medicine bottles, plates, and other signs of human habitation. We entered the vaults at midnight. As April turned to May, Beltane was upon us. Upon Dan arriving in Edinburgh, he informed me that he had been contacted by an older gentleman called George. As the weekend commenced and Dan would explore Edinburgh, he stated that the spirit of George was indeed becoming more pronounced. When we entered the vaults, Dan was drawn to the first of the underground chambers. The section previously served as the source coven of the Temple of the Blue Dragon, an Edinburgh Wiccan group. Although no longer used in practice, the room remains as it was when used by the group. We're at the Edinburgh Vaults. It's about two o'clock in the morning on the 1st of May 2022. Over to you, Dan. So, um, in this room, particularly in each room I've, I, I'll go in, it'll be like a, an onion and I'll just keep going through the layers. So, um, I, I, I feel that everyone has their own little space and their own little area they live in, they work in and they die in, everything is that is this is their home this is where they this this is their whole life is here um and it's all controlled by one man and uh and he will be um telling them when they basically can eat sleep um, go go to the toilet. It, 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 he's, he's in control of everyone. Now I say everyone. I mean I'm talking. How I feel is easily 200 people. Not just in not in this space. 30. I can feel 30 spirits. About 30. My guides are saying about 30 at the moment. And where I'm coming in at is about 30. Um, it's a mix of. Um, adult, male, female, children, animals, um, and these people are in absolute dire need of a good meal, a wash, someone to actually care for them, because these people, they are just not cared for at all. And the people that are above them, that are controlling them, they just don't care for them either. And they, they, they are just basically a number and it's all about money and it's all about what they can get out of, what they can get, what this man specifically can get out of, of them. Um, There's a lot of carrowing people, a lot of people in the corners, and they're too scared to even come out. They're too scared to talk, um, talk to me. And they, I believe they know I, they can hear me. And I, um, and I, I spiritually, and 
as we say telepathically kind of I can I can I, I can I can I can speak to them I can communicate with them but they just won't they won't come out they won't they're too scared and it's all because of this gentleman which has just moved to the, this doorway because he knows that I'm talking about him and this man is a diabolical man he's a man of um, he's a man of he has to be in control um, and he's, he has a lady with him and this lady is very um, very scared of him but won't leave her won't leave um, his side. One section of the vault features a solid stone circle in the centre of the room. Right, so... What stays the constant, what stays the same is, is just this energy within here. Um, and it's a, a containment. Um, Spirit, my guides are telling me this is not the this is this is not the original. These stones have been moved. This is this is not the original containment. Um, I feel that it was actually slightly smaller, um, and within it was uh, um, a chalk uh, like pentagram. Um, And I, th I, I, I believe that the, um, I have, I'll say how they, they take my head, the, 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 the sorcerer, they, they call him a sorcerer, sorcery. This, the sorcery that was, that was created has actually created something um, negative. And um, I feel that it was taunting um, the sorcerer and I believe he had to contain it within the circle before it released havoc. I feel like that the energy in here was a really good energy, very protective place before um, before this hex or this containment was was created on on this circle. Uh, up here, I feel. Um, an altar. I feel that there is. Um, I feel that there is shelves of jars and, and, and boxes. I feel that there is um, banners and flags and symbolisms of of um, both protection and Wiccan demonology. It, it's a mix. It's definitely a mix of things, but. Then you get, then, then you strip this all back, and then you've actually got um, you've got boxes, and it, I recognise these boxes as boxes of of tea, dried tea. There's also boxes in here of of, of uh, a precious commodity of of tobacco, and um, we're going back back quite far. Back when tobacco was quite a, a, a valuable, valuable substance. And it was guarded and um, it was it was protected. And I always say, nothing in this place is 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 owned by the people that work here and are making and it's all it's all it's all owned by the fat cats upstairs, and they just they just don't care about the people down here, and they know that they're nobody. As three and then four o'clock arrived, we both decided to leave the investigation for the night. However, 
the other member of the groups would continue for the remainder of the visit. On a completely different side note, weeks after the night in the vaults, I discovered a post about the source coven of the Temple of the Blue Dragon. The head Wiccan had previously spent the night in the vaults alone in the section featuring the stone circle. The feature covered its history and explained the reasons for their choice of the room within the vaults. The coven once used the room but abandoned it due to the hostile atmosphere from within. The lead Wiccan had since passed and the group had ceased to exist with this. The article informed me that the coven leader was a man named Mr Cameron. Mr George Cameron. Perhaps a mere coincidence, or was he warning Dan on his trip to Darkest Edinburgh that day? On the evening of Sunday the 1st of May, Spirit Vision, Paranormal Research and I travelled to a haunted Leith location. The Edinburgh Biscuit Factory has previously featured in the realms of North Edinburgh nightmares. It was constructed in 1947 as a warehouse to accommodate the existing factory and the building operated for many years. After its closure years later, the building would remain unoccupied until 2015. The site is now used as a multi-purpose event space and retains its original features. It may also still house some of its original staff and residents from beyond the grave. Spirit Vision began to load in at 9pm that night. They began to set up many cameras and monitoring equipment to capture movement from within the building. As darkness fell upon the lethal location, the doors closed and the lights dimmed that night. Midnight would arrive and the Spirit Vision team began the night's investigation. They started on the top floor and the activity would soon be present. The group focused on the upstairs over the following few hours. Rocky appeared from upstairs and informed the group that something had activated multiple devices. The spirit box they had set up in the centre of the room began to emit noise crackling and sound presented across the barren and desolate industrial location. After a while, what appeared to be solid words presented, including explicit profanity after I had asked a question. I presented an archival piece of equipment to the experiment that night. My mother worked in the factory back in the 1950s and she had acquired an original tin box from her time at Crawford's. 
we place the metal object in the centre of the floor to connect with whatever still occupied the building. Lights began to flash in the vicinity of the square metal box and sound cascaded from the audio device. Could the box have served as a conduit with the spirit that night? After a short break, we returned to the ground floor to commence the second half of the experiment. At precisely 3am, both Lee and Sarah were startled after witnessing something from the rear of the ground floor. They both claimed to have seen what would appear to be an arm materialise from behind one of the large iron pillars and exit from an adjacent support. Did the cameras capture the image at 3am that morning? During the lockdown of 2021, Biscuit Factory staff entered the locked building after its closure some months previous. They were drawn to the disturbing sight of what appeared to be a break-in from behind the bar area. Fiona, the manager's dog Kai, seemed disturbed as they entered the bar area and approached the section with the beer bar. Something had moved a barrel and scattered cans across the floor. When staff examined the doors and exits, nothing had entered the building throughout the lockdown. Many biscuit factory staff have claimed to have encountered a spirit at varying times of the day and night. They have even nicknamed the entity as Stevie the Ghost. Did he accompany us that night in the haunted realms of the Crawford Biscuit Factory? So this is the very bit, Rocky. This is the bit where it happened. Right, right where I'm standing. Was the, what they describe as the, the backstage area is where the girl... This is where Fiona was telling the story, right here. And the girl got... Something went down her leg or something when she was coming back with the champagne. Please activate this device in front of me if there is, if you'd like to speak to us. This one, this device. Maybe he was with us from the very beginning. 